Earlier in my life, when I thought of a bucket list, it was all about places I still wanted to visit, things I wanted to experience, goals I still wanted to achieve. In other words, manifesting my dreams. Well, this bucket list memory has a little twist to it. It's been a lifelong, fun-filled endeavor, without a doubt an adventure of grand proportions. I believe it was Helen Keller who once said in so many words that life should be an adventure, else it is nothing. I'd like to share with you one of many such adventures, one I have now tucked away in my treasure chest label, Bucketless Reflections. It was 1933 a turbulent time sweeping across a world still in the throes of political, economic, and social upheaval. Hitler had just been elected Chancellor of Germany, an event that would change the world as we knew it forever. My mother had just gotten married and was off on a honeymoon cruise aboard the SS Monte Rosa. Destination, Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. The famous, now iconic statue of Christ the Redeemer had just been completed atop the 2,000-foot Corcovado mountain, looming over what I have always considered the most beautiful city in the world. Perhaps it was the fact that my mother's trip to South America was eloquently documented in journals with many photos that gave rise in me of a lifelong fascination with Brazil and particularly Rio de Janeiro. I can vividly remember my mother's exciting stories of that trip. Snakes wrapped around her body, trips into the jungle, monkeys and other exotic animals perched on her shoulders. To my young teenage years, this was heaven. It allowed my imagination to entertain flights of unimaginable adventures. To think that I would one day stand at the base of that colossal monument, just as my mother had almost 80 years earlier, filled me with an inner spiritual awe I can't even begin to describe. Overlooking the famous panoramic vista of Rio with the stunning beaches of Copacabana and Ipanema below me was truly a magical moment for me. It was like, wow! To think my mother once stood where I was standing. Seeing an almost identical view was a mind-blowing experience. Of course, she did not see the spectacular Macarena soccer stadium below me, nor could she imagine that in 2014, Germany would win the Soccer World Cup. Yay! Breathing in the same air as she had, not as polluted as now, of course, touched me deeply. I had definitely fallen in love with that part of the world. It inspired me to journey further south to Argentina, to the city of Buenos Aires, also known as the Paris of the South. Again, I fell head over heels in love with the old world charm and elegance of a city with its rich, multi faceted mix of people from all over the world. What fun and stress to take lessons in the Argentine tango. Only to see little five-year-olds on the street mastering it with little effort. Everywhere there was evidence of a turbulent history. Seeing the tomb of Evita Perón was really impressive. Her aura was still there. I knew I needed to return to Buenos Aires. My three-day trip, a thousand miles to the north, to the breathtakingly beautiful grandeur of the Iguazu Falls, bordering Paraguay, Brazil, and Argentina, that literally left me breathless. To witness and be in the presence of nature's majestic display, it was truly a transformational and unintended spiritual experience for me. 
I shall always consider it a very special gift. If all of my future bucket list adventures bestow on me that kind of bonus, I'll be a happy camper. <laughs>